praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, does anybody feel like giving God a hallelujah? Hallelujah is the highest praise. We can give it in spite of how we're feeling because we know we serve a good God. Come on, somebody give God a praise today. A hallelujah in your spirit. A hallelujah in your soul. A hallelujah in the midst of your situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, just give God a hallelujah. Amen. It'll keep you from going crazy. I'm telling you, praise will keep your mind right. Amen. How y'all feeling today? Praise God. Praise God. Y'all saw the promo for our series. <laughs> for our series next month, <laughs> Insecure. So make sure uh, you are here for that, amen. Come on, let's give God praise for our pastor, Pastor Mike in his absence. So grateful to God uh, that he was able to bless us last week with his presence and then he was here this morning um, and preached at the 8 a.m. service. And so we thank God that he's resting now, amen. amen. Don't be mad about it. Amen. Thank God that he's resting. And if you can stand to your feet, we're going to go ahead and get into it with our purpose statement. Amen. 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 Let's say that together. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers who have been called to live the lives that we were created to live commanded by God to love beyond the limits of our prejudices and commissioned by God to serve. Amen. Called to live, commanded to love, commissioned to serve. And if you can't remember all of that, we live, love, serve. Amen, amen, and amen. Do y'all ever say that during the week sometimes just to remind yourself? Amen, sometimes you gotta pull it back together. When you just right there on the ledge, you got to remind yourself that you're called to live, not called to curse. Amen, amen, amen. You're not called to curse that person out. Amen. Called to live. Amen. Commanded to love in spite of how they're treating you. Amen. Amen. Beyond the limits of our prejudices and commissioned to serve, being available and helpful to, to someone else. And so we are grateful for our pastor who has given us this vision that we can keep before us, not only while we're here in worship, but as a part of our everyday life and who God has called us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so if you have your our Bibles, we are going to just go uh, to Psalm 103. I'm feeling a little discombobulated. The deacons prayed for me, you know, got me all emotional before the sermon and everything. I don't know if I'm supposed to be making announcements. I just... We good? Everybody good? <laughs> Amen. Um, Psalm 103 this morning um, is going to be our scripture. Um, and so if you have it, your phone and your apps, it's always good to take notes when you come to church um, so you can go back during the week and um, reflect on uh, the sermon, see how it can help push you forward. Go back and read that scripture for yourself. It can make a difference in your life. And so Psalm 103 is a psalm of David. It's titled Thanksgiving for God's Goodness. Um, we're going to read the first five chapters. And so it reads, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, somebody say all, all. that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed 
like the eagles. Let's, let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me. You are our strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to us. God, we thank you that you are our strength and that you are continually reaching to us. We thank you that that strength makes us perfect in our weakness. So when we're weak, we can be strong. We thank you that that strength helps us to continue to move forward even when we are, feels like we're being pushed back. God, we thank you that that strength gives us the will to get up and try again, to move to the places that you want us to go, to do the things that you've called us to do, to become the person that you've called us to be. And we are grateful today for your strength. God, I ask that you stand tall in me in this moment, that your sons and daughters might hear you more than they see me. And we give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And we thank you. And we thank you. And we thank you for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And we say together, amen. 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 If you'll just remain standing, I just want to read those verses one more time. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Amen. Won't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you take your seats. Thank you, God. So today I want to talk a little bit about making it through the middle. Talking this morning about making it through the middle. Anybody in the middle of something right now? Yeah. Um, and it's really inspired by our pastor, um, Pastor Mike, um, because he is in the middle um, of a very, very serious situation. Um, and we, we know the story because we, we heard it last week you, or you saw it on Facebook or you heard me when I told it or you watched the video. Um, but he had a seizure um, and they have taken some images um, that he had his doctor's appointment on Monday and they have ordered some additional tests. So he's going to be taking those tests this week. Uh, on Monday and Wednesday and then he goes back to the doctor the following Monday so that they can give him a plan. Um, and what I realized is that sometimes uh, the beginning and the end are easier than the middle. You know, when you find yourself in the middle where you're waiting for something to happen, where you're not sure how it's going to work out, where you're unclear on which direction to go. I'm talking about being in the middle, where you can be a little anxious about what's going to happen. You can be a little fearful about if things are going to work out. I'm talking about being in the middle. I think the first time I realized the challenges of the middle was when I was working as an assistant principal at a middle school. 
I mean, I was a principal at an elementary school. I'd worked and taught in elementary schools. I had advised and did training um, in high schools. And, and the middle school is where the most challenges seem to arise. You know, and you think about it, when you're in elementary school, you kind of, at the beginning of your education, those children, they're excited to be there. Remember your first day of kindergarten, they're ready to go. Um, and, and they are anxious to get to the next level. So they're motivated, generally, generally. You know, we know there are exceptions, but generally, those elementary school kids, they're motivated to get to the middle. And then when you think about high school students, they're motivated to graduate. And so generally, they're going to do what they need to do to get to that next level of graduation. But it's those middle years. When you're in middle school is when you get into all the trouble, when you're trying to figure out who you want to be, what kind of person you want to become, when you're trying to decide whether you're going to obey your parents or you're going to listen to your friends. I'm talking about the middle, right? Even when you think about going to college, for those of us who've been to college, your freshman year, you are excited because you're just glad to be away from home. Amen. Just glad to be on your own. You're excited. You're, you're ready to do it. And then your senior year, you're ready to graduate. So you're doing everything you need to do to get out of school. But that sophomore and that junior year, you know, that's the middle. That's when the grades begin to dip, when you start getting a little bored. Maybe you're getting a little concerned. I'm talking about the middle in between. We can even look at our marriage. Has anybody been married? Amen. Because when you go in there, aren't you excited? Oh, hallelujah. Got my soul mate, amen, got that ring, you know. If you want it, then you should have put a ring, put a ring on it. Amen, you're excited, ready to conquer life together. And then if you talk to anybody that's got about 30, 40 years in, they just, they sliding in, they, they happy as can be, they smiling, they're used to each other's idiosyncrasies and they are ready to go on. But at the middle years, you know, around year seven, around year 14, you know, Start getting a little used to one another. Start getting a little tired of one another. You know, start getting on each other's nerves. Not talking about me. I ain't talking about you, baby. I ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about the middle, though, right? We can look at our careers. Some of us are early in the beginning of our careers. We're excited. The sky is the limit. We're ready to break the glass ceiling. And then towards the end of our careers, we're looking towards a retirement, trying to save up that next step. But in the middle, so when we can't, we're not as motivated as we, as we used to be. We're trying to figure out which, which way to go, which direction to turn. Sometimes when we're in the middle, we can get anxious and we can get fearful. We begin to sweat a little bit. We can start to worry a little bit. When we're in the middle, we don't know what to do or where to go. We're not sure how it's going to work out. We start turning to different people and asking all kinds of opinion when we're in the middle, when we're waiting to, on the doctor to tell us what's next, when we're waiting on the test results, when we're waiting on the judge to give us the verdict, when we're waiting, 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 we can lose hope. When we're waiting, we can get lost. When we're waiting, we can get tired. When we're waiting, we can feel overwhelmed. When we're waiting, we can get sick and we can get tired and we can get tired of being sick when we're waiting. If you've ever been in the middle, you might understand what I'm talking about. Just unsure in the middle. You don't know in the middle. You're not quite convinced when you're in the middle. And sometimes we just don't know what to do, right? And so when I was thinking about that, this scripture, Psalm 103, is a scripture that that came to me because I was written by David and, you know, I'm doing all the research and people guess about when David wrote this. They guess that maybe he's a little bit older, that maybe he's been through some things. But I like to think that David was in the middle of something when he wrote this particular psalm, when he penned this particular psalm, because back then psalms were not written, they were sang, they were said aloud. And so people would have known this psalm even by heart. Uh, but David wrote this psalm not for us, but he wrote it for himself. We're able to look at it and glean from it and learn from it, but he really wrote it for himself. We can see that because he says, bless the Lord, O 
oh my soul and all that is within me. So, so David is talking to himself. He's saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And it's not just enough for David's soul to bless the Lord. It's not enough for David's mouth to say these words. But then David says, and all that is within me. That means every organ bless the Lord. My eyes bless the Lord. My hands and my feet and my limbs bless the Lord. My heart and my lungs bless the Lord. Every blood vessel, every capillary, every artery, every bone, every tendon, every ligament, my brain bless the Lord's my inner ear bless the Lord's all of my inside my blood and the, the oxygen that's flowing through me everything bless the Lord not just some things you know and when we bless the Lord some of us we, we open our mouths and we say hallelujah our mouths are saying hallelujah but it's your heart saying hallelujah is your heart grateful for another beat? Are your lungs saying hallelujah because they're grateful for another breath? Is your blood saying hallelujah because it's flowing through your body? Are your feet saying hallelujah because they're able to move and get you to the places that you need to go? Are your arms saying hallelujah because you're able to do what you need to do with him? David was clear. It wasn't enough for him just to bless God with his mouth. It wasn't enough for him to bless God with his soul, but he said, with all that is within me. I love that uh, because he's reminding himself that he owes all praises to God. And without God, none of him would be able to bless God in the first place. So it's only because of God that we're able to bless God. Is there anybody here that has a blessed God in your spirit, in your soul? and all that is within you. He goes on and says, uh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all of his benefits. You know, that's what makes me think David is in the middle of something. Because not only does he bless the Lord twice, but then he tells himself, don't forget all of the benefits of God. See, that's why I think he was going through something and, and he's talking to himself and he's trying to remind himself and convince himself and reconcile with himself that he is God and God is his and everything is going to work out the way God intends it to work out. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and do not forget his benefits. I, I wonder why David said, uh, do not forget instead of remember. You know, sometimes we say remember, right? Uh, remember to do this. Remember to get the keys. Remember to take the paper. Remember to go here. But when we really want somebody to remember something, we say what? Don't forget. And, and so it's, it's an even, it's like a remember to, to the second power. Don't forget when you're going through, when you're in the middle, don't forget the benefits of God. I like it because when we talk to ourselves, statistics tell us uh, that 80% of what we say to ourselves is negative. So David could have written this song and said, woe is me, and I don't know why I'm so sick, and I don't know why I'm going to make it, and, and all of those negative things that sometimes we think when we're in the middle. But David talks to himself, and he speaks in the positive. He speaks in the affirmative, and we ought to challenge ourselves and challenge our thoughts. Pay attention to the things we are thinking. Pay attention to the things that we're saying to ourselves. Pay attention to the words that are coming out of our mouth, because the power of life and death is is in our tongues and what flows from our tongues is in our hearts and our minds so all of that negativity that you're saying before you even say it it's already permeated your whole being and so we ought to change direction sometimes in the things that we were saying uh no the glass is not half empty the glass is half full uh, I know, uh, regardless of what the tests say, I know that God is with me and it's going to be all right. We can speak those things that are not as though they were. And as a matter of fact, I'm expecting a negative test results. And I'm speaking a negative test result even before the test. Am I helping anybody today? And so David, talking to himself, says, don't forget. He's telling himself, don't forget all of the benefits of God. Because sometimes when we're in the middle, 
and we're going through, we're so focused on the thing that we're going through, we forget about the God that is with us while we're going through the thing, right? And so not only does he say, don't forget all of his benefits, but then he begins to remind himself of some of the benefits of God. Uh, He says, who forgives all your iniquity? That means everything that you've ever done, God has forgiven you for. Every thought, oh, y'all don't believe that. Every thought that you've ever thought, every word that you've ever said, God has already forgiven you for it because God loves you. You were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God. And we have but yet to ask for forgiveness and God already extends it to us. As a matter of fact, even before we ask for forgiveness, God searches our hearts and knows where we are and extends that forgiveness to us. So we don't have to walk around being guilty. We don't have to walk around feeling bad. The enemy gives you guilt. And then we give that to one another. Have you ever made somebody feel guilty? You liked it, didn't you? Tell the truth. It felt just a little bit. And why do we do that when God doesn't do that? Why do we do that to others when God doesn't do that to us? Yeah, we might be convicted, in what we've done. God may want us to do something different next time, but to hold it over our head and to beat us up with it, we don't see that from our God. And so if we didn't learn that from God, where did we learn it from? And so we've got to begin to reconcile what God has done for us, because maybe if we can remember the benefits that God has extended to us, maybe we can extend some grace to someone else. Maybe we can extend some mercy to someone else. Maybe we can extend some forgiveness. Are we all together? So David is reminding himself while he's in the middle of who this God is and what this God has done, and he wants to bless God for all that God has done, doesn't want to forget all of these benefits. One, forgives your iniquity. Two, heals all your diseases. I imagine that David had been sick along his journey and that God had healed him of some things along the way. Has anybody been healed by God of some things along the way? I'm not only talking about a physical healing, but have you, have you kept your sanity all these years? Have you had some emotional healing? Have you had some psychological healing? Uh, God heals all of our diseases. God can not only heal us from from cancer and from from brain tumors, amen, but God can heal us from hate and from envy and from lying and from deception. God heals all our diseases. And then he says, he who redeems your life from the pit. Uh, That means when you're in your lowest place, when you feel like you are all by yourself and no one understands and maybe no one is there for you, maybe you've hit rock bottom in your life and and people have turned their backs on you and you're trying to figure out, how did I even get to this place? I did everything I was supposed to do. I, I tried to do my best and I'm still stuck in the pit. And David wants you to know that that we serve a God who can redeem your life from the pit. Not just you, but your whole life. That that God can pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. That God can give you a future that you never anticipated because God knows the plans that God has for you. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And if we know that God has plans for us, then we know we're not called to be stuck in a pit. We know we're not called to be stuck in a dead place. We know we're not called to be stuck in a dead relationship. We know we're not called to be stuck in those places that we think can contain us. But I don't know about you, but the way I figure it is there's no pit that can contain me because I'm not by myself. Any pit that tries to even subdue me, God is with me. I've got angels with me. I've got prairie warriors with me. I, I am not by. There's an army behind me. You may not be able to see it, but you've got to know that you're not by yourself, that God has given you the power and yet the will to come through any situation 
even if it doesn't feel like it right now. Because sometimes you got to do stuff even when you don't feel like it. Remember when mama told you to clean your room and you really wanted to go outside and play and you had to do it anyway even though you didn't feel like it. Sometimes we get up and we go to jobs because we know we need to work in order to survive even though we don't feel like sometimes we got to forgive people Lord have mercy who have hurt us beyond hurt stabbed us in the back called us outside of our name even though we don't and sometimes you got to pick yourself up shake the dust off and keep on walking forward even if you don't because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So even though we don't feel like it, we do it anyway. We do it because we know that God is with us. We do it because we know God is going to bless us. We do it because we know heaven is watching and God gets excited when we do things even though we don't. Tell your neighbor it's not about feelings, it's about the facts. And the facts are we serve a God who forgives us all our sins, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems our life from the pit. David says he crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Ah, uh, I don't know if you've ever had a crown on your head Some of us, let's, can we be honest, would rather be crowned with gold and diamonds. We'd rather be crowned with platinum, silver, rubies, precious diamonds. We'd rather be crowned with flattery when people tell us the things that we want to hear, even though they may not be true. We'd rather be crowned with things people can see because we feel like if they can see us crowned, then maybe they'll think differently about us and recognize our value. But those crowns eventually fade away. They don't last. They'll last for a little while, but they're only temporary. But when God crowns you with love, that means when other folk don't love you, God still loves you. When you can't love yourself, God still loves you. When other people can't see your value, God still loves you. When you make your worst mistake, God still loves you. When you speak out of the side of your mouth about things you think you know but you really don't understand, God still loves you. When you can't find one good thing to say about yourself, God is loving you. Always. We all together? Ah. Uh, God's love surpasses anything that anybody could ever do or say to you. God's love is bigger than that. It's bigger than your last disappointment. It's bigger than that last job you got fired from. It's bigger than your financial limitations. It's bigger than that person that you want to love you but doesn't love you, that you're chasing after to try to make love you, but you don't want love and it has to be forced anyway. God's love is bigger than that. Tell your neighbor, God's love is bigger. Crowns you with love, but not just love, love and mercy. Wait. I, I wanted to ask David, David, why didn't you say God crowns you with love and grace? And I hear David saying to me, well, grace 
is when God gives you something that you don't deserve. And that's good. Anybody grateful for grace? You, you don't deserve it. You, maybe you didn't even ask for it, but God just said, take this. Here, take that. Here, I'm going to give you a little bit over here. But mercy is when God doesn't give you what you do deserve. Because some of us shouldn't be standing here right now if we got what we deserved. Some of us even wouldn't be alive right now if we got what we deserved. Some of us wouldn't be talking and walking and moving if we got what we deserved. We wouldn't be looking so cute. So David says, he crowns you. That means that his love and mercy covers you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. God's love and his mercy covers you. That means everywhere you go. Love and mercy are with you. Every door you walk into, love and mercy are with you. Every meeting that you go into, love and mercy are with you. Every relationship that you enter into, love and mercy are with you. Every hospital you go into, love and mercy are with you. Every courtroom that you go... David's talking to himself, uh, and he says finally, well not finally because the chapter is longer than this, you got to read the rest of it, it's good stuff, but he says, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I like that. He says he satisfies you with good as long as you live. And I like it because our sister to me sang this morning that it ain't over till it's good. So if it's not good, then it's not over. And I need somebody to bless God for that right now because you may be in the middle of a situation that is not good. But you need to be reminded that if it's not good, then it's not over because it's not over until it's good. All the bad will be good. All the good will be good. All the negative will be good. All the positive will be good. And everything in between, when you're up, is good. When you're down, it's good. When you're right, and when you're wrong, when there's people all around you, and when you're all by yourself. So don't get down. If it ain't going the way that you want it to go, that means God is still working. Don't get tired of faithing because it doesn't look the way you want it to look. Because if it's not good, then it's not over. Tell your neighbor, God is still working. Come on, tell your other neighbor, God is still working. Come on, tell the person behind you, God is still working. Come on, tell yourself it ain't over till it's good. And then he says, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So I had to do a little research about eagles. Because like, why did he use eagle instead of like elephant or lion? You know, I'm a Leo, roar, you know. And I realized that David being a shepherd, right? Being outside, I'm sure he saw a lot of eagles 
in his day. But the thing that I love the most, and we could talk about eagles all day, but the thing I love the most about eagles is that they go through a molting season. When they get older, uh, with their wings. Because when an eagle's wing is damaged, like other birds, uh, it does not have the capacity to heal itself. And I'm just gonna put a pause right there. We're gonna come back to the eagle, remind me of that. Because God created our bodies such that they have the capacity to heal themselves. <laughs> have you ever got a cut? What happens? It bleeds and then it gets a scab and then it gets a scar but you don't keep on bleeding. If you break your arm here, the doctors can set it in a way that it reconnects. It reconnects, and not only does it reconnect, but then it's stronger than the rest of the... I'm trying to help somebody. Because you think you're in a situation that's unrepairable. And you need to understand that your body has the capacity to heal itself, which means that your mind has the capacity to heal itself, which means that your spirit has the capacity to heal itself, which means that you might be hurt now, but you don't have to stay hurt. If you leave it alone and don't pick at it, it'll get a scab. And if you leave that scab alone long enough, you'll end up with a scar. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for the scars that I have on my body. Because it lets me know that I'm a survivor. It lets me know that I'm strong. I, when I was younger, trying to be cute, I didn't like my scars. I used to try to cover them with makeup. But now, you can't be my friend if you ain't got no scars. You need to know that you've been through some things and survived them. And you need to know the people around you have been through some things. And I mean, I need people around me that when it's time to go down and it's getting ready to go down, I need to know you ain't going to run and leave me by myself. I need to know you've been through some things. You survived some things. You overcome some. Is there anybody here? that's proud of the scars that they, somebody shout hallelujah. No. Oh. The eagle whose wings does not have the capacity to heal itself. And so as it's flying and living its best life, it comes into contact with all kinds of things that ultimately weigh the wing down. Oil will weigh the wing down. Dirt and, and grime will weigh the wing down. It, it can get damaged in flight or if someone's trying to catch it or if someone's trying to shoot it. Those wings can get damaged. And because they are unable to repair themselves, in its older age, the eagle goes through a molting period. And in that molting period, they find a nice, quiet space, generally a valley, sometimes a mountain, but a place where they can be by themselves so that they can molt. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying to you. And when they go through the molting period, basically, they pick all of their feathers out and then their body grows new feathers so that by the end of the molting period they have shed all of the old feathers those that were damaged some that were not damaged and they get all new feathers 
so that they feel young again. Vibrant again. They can fly high again. They can soar above mountains again. And so I think what David is saying is that even as we get older, there are ways that we can shed things that we don't need and that God can replace them with the good things that God wants us to have. And so some of us right now might be going through a molting phase where you feel like you're losing things that you need, not recognizing that everything you allow to fall away, God will replace with something that's newer and better. I need you to hear what I'm saying today. That as you voluntarily pluck your feathers, as you voluntarily pluck those things that are not necessary to you, that God will replace them with new feathers. So as you pluck a feather of hate, God will give you a feather of love. As you pluck a feather of fear, God will give you a feather of confidence. As you pluck and let go of the material things that you don't need, God will replace them with the spiritual things that you do need. And I just need to know, is there anybody here today that's going through a molting phase? Sometimes you pluck the feathers and sometimes they fall off all on their own. The molting phase is not a cute phase. It's not a nice phase. As a matter of fact, the reason that the eagle isolates himself, except around other eagle friends, is so they won't be attacked. Because when you're in the molting phase, you are not necessarily guarded with the wing. But God wants to give you some new things to guard you some love and some grace and some peace and some joy and some hope as you shed away the things that are no longer beneficial to you like anger and holding grudges and staying mad and being unhappy and talking bad about yourself and having a pity party and beating yourself up god will pour on to you the things that you will need to continue to move forward in this life God has called us to live. How do you make it through the middle? Do like David did. You bless God. Spirit of gratitude. Don't forget the benefits and expect some molting. I don't know about you, but when I read this, I was inspired to write my own song. Because I got some benefits here that David didn't list. He saved me from going crazy. That's one of the benefits. He wrapped his arms around me when I felt like I was all by myself. That was one of the benefits. Reminded me that I was fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and likeness of God when I couldn't see anything good about myself. That was one of the benefits. And I bet if you sit and think about it, you can think of your own benefits so that when you're in the middle, you don't forget that you've been through a whole lot of middles, that God has seen you through them, God has kept you through them, and God is with you right now to get you through the middle that you're currently in. When you are in the middle, just start talking to yourself. The good things. God is good. God is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is with me. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through God who gives me strength. I am a child of the most high God. Don't forget all of those benefits talk yourself through 
because we don't have time to deal with the feelings. We got to deal with the facts. You got some facts in your life today? Come on, you know God has brought you through. You know God will see you too. If you can just make it through the middle. Amen. 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 Won't you stand to your feet all over the building? Amen. We praise God. We praise God today. Because life is not easy. We are all going through something. My grandmother used to say, either you're in a storm, you're going into a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. But the storm doesn't come to stay. It comes to pass. And if we can just stay strong in the passing, as a matter of fact, some of us ought to learn to dance in the rain. Hey, when you know the storm is passing, you can dance in the rain. Some of us need to go home and do a dance. As a matter of fact, is there a dancing spirit in the house? I need to know if anybody can just do a little one step, two step. Amen, because I know I'm going to get through this. Anybody can do a little one step, two step. I'm dancing in the midst of this storm. I can move in the midst of what's going on. I can give God glory no matter how I feel. I feel like dancing, dancing. Hey, dancing in the rain. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. That's not how y'all dance. That's not how y'all dance. Hey. Amen, amen. That's just to get you started. I need y'all to have a praise party all the way home and when you get home. Listen, life is not perfect for anybody. It's not easy for anybody. Hey, yes. But if we trust God, dance your way through even if you don't feel like it amen hallelujah come on give God a praise the doors of the church are open and we um, what that means is you know we say that but what that means is it doesn't mean that it's time to leave you know amen he's like the doors are open and get out of here no what it means is it's an opportunity um, for us to respond to the word that we just received. And for some of us, it's a time of thoughtfulness and reflection um, about what you heard today that was applicable for your life. And for others, it's an opportunity to say, you know what, I want to be a part of this God move. I want to be a part of this God family. I want to be a part of what God is doing in this place. And so it's an opportunity if you don't have your own personal relationship with God to say, yes, God, uh, I say yes to you. And, and to come and say yes to God and to declare that you love God more than anything because God loves you enough to stay with you even when we act like we don't know God or we've never been introduced to God, that God has always been there. And so it's our opportunity to say, yes, God, I wanna be a part of this movement, this, this, this move that you are creating that started so long ago, but that still extends to us today. It's also an opportunity for you if you're looking for a church home, a place where you can learn and grow, um, to say yes to this place, FCBC. Not a perfect place, um, but a place that's filled with people who love God, 
place filled with people who will pray with you and who will walk with you and who will lift you as you walk with God. And so we extend this opportunity to you to say yes to God, to say yes to this place. At this time when we say the doors of the church are open, won't you come today? Thank you, God. Are working for my good, yeah, yeah. God's intentional, never failing. All things are working for my good, cause he's intentional. Never, won't you come today? If you're in the balcony, we will wait for you. There's time, there's time. God bless you, my brother. Come on, is there another? Won't you say yes to God today? Won't you say yes to God today? Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, God. All thanks, all thanks. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother. Amen, coming from the balcony. If there's another, we will wait for you. Won't you come today? God bless you, my sister. Come on, let's give God praise as they come. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Never fail. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Come on, won't you say yes to God? Today is your day. This is your time. You don't have to wait to do anything. You don't have to wait on anybody. Let this be your moment. Say yes to God. If you feel that pushing, that urging, that nudging, trust the spirit and say yes. And just start walking. Just start walking. Hallelujah. Won't you come? He's intentional. Never failing. All things are working for my good. Never failing. Amen. Come on from the balcony. God bless you, my sister. Come on. Is there another? Come on. Give God praise. We're going to celebrate. We're celebrating. Celebrate. Celebrate. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He's in. Never. You know what? I believe that if we start praising, more will start coming. Everybody wants to be celebrated. And so if you're here today, we want to celebrate your decision to say yes to God, to say yes to community. So we're going to start clapping and we're going to trust. Come on. We're going to trust. Don't stop. Don't stop. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 keep clapping, keep clapping, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. your name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless your holy name, God. Bless the Lord, all our souls and 
we will not forget all of your benefits. God, we thank you and we bless you and we love you. And we're grateful that you have given us a formula for what to do when we're in the middle. That we will be reminded that you are God and God alone. That you are with us, that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us, and that you know the plans that you have for us. God, that we would remember the benefits that you have given us. Those that we've received personally, those that we've read about, and those that we've heard about. But God, you're always doing something to blow our minds. And when we're in the middle, we won't forget what you did the last time. And God, we thank you that when we're in the middle, we have something to look forward to. And that's being renewed, our strength being renewed, our love being renewed, our joy being renewed, oh God. We look forward to that renewal, that we might be young again in our spirits, in our minds, in our souls, in our hearts. We love you, God. We thank you that you don't leave us in the midst of our despair but that you give us exactly what we need so that we can do what you called us to do and live the life that you called us to live. Thank you, God, that the middle is not the end. And thank you, God, that it's not over until it's good. For you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We love you, God. We thank you. And we lift this prayer in ourselves in your holy name. And we say together, amen. 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 Come on, give somebody a hug. Tell them you can make it through the middle. Lakeisha, at opening of the doors of the church, we have eight to come. We have Roy Shula, Dashi, Belle, Deshaun Butler, Brian Taylor, Linda Roots. We have Shalisa George, Elizabeth Rossi, and Cara, Carrie Ann Sigel. Sigel. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful to God for each of you on today. We are excited to be your family. And on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Michael A. Warren Jr., and the entire FCBC family, we welcome you with the love of the Lord. We are excited to see how God is going to move in you and through you and bless you while you're in this place. And we will stand with you. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so let us stretch forth our hands and say, God, we thank you for eight more souls. God, we thank you for eight more soldiers. God, we thank you for eight more warriors. God, we thank you for eight more family members. Hold on. I want you to understand the significance that there are eight people standing in front of us. Because eight is the number of new beginnings. And God is letting us know that on the other side of our middle,